right there. Change it. I got you. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Sorry for that. Sorry about that. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. We got to, we got, we definitely, we, we getting our game better with, with this Periscope thing. It's definitely getting better. Uh, actually, uh, just something came across the screen. And as I hit the button uh, to decline it, uh, I lost uh, my scope. So I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining again, fellas. This is Barbershop Talk, Pastor Kenny, uh, alongside my wonderful and awesome wife, Pastor Rhonda. This is the Restoration Center, Charlotte, in the city of Charlotte barbershop talk tonight every thursday at 7 30 it was a little bit of a delay tonight it says take two whoop whoop amen dads thank you thank you thank you all right so let's get ready to get into it i want and as as you join uh i just thank you for joining amen uh but we want to just review uh humility and and this pathway to progress is so definitely so important it's a it's a personal testimony of mine uh you know the attribute of humility um i haven't always operated in humility um, in so many areas. I found myself as I was on this pathway to progress and getting in the word of the most high and building my relationship with him. He began to show me where uh, I was I was really drowning in, in, in pride and in, in those areas of pride. How many know that when you're in a relationship with the most high, he's always looking to reprove and correct and chasing you because he loves you. He wants you to understand him more. He wants you to prosper in this life. He wants to give you things that will help you operate so that when he opens up the gate and tells his people to come in, you will be prepared. You will be ready. And so the most High really had to deal with me personally, personally in the place of pride. And, and, and that is something that um, I'm not ashamed to say. And I don't think any of us should be ashamed to say because the scriptures let us know that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So the world that we've been born into, it, it, it is a atmosphere of pride. It is an atmosphere of people who are elevating themselves above everybody else, including the most high. I mean, even if you just look at what's going on today in politics and just on the news and the things that we see on Facebook, so many people are right now being swallowed up by pride. Uh, people just are finding it very, very hard to just humble themselves, man, and, and just sometimes if you, you just need to fall back. And that's what I had to learn in, in this walk with the most. I just needed to fall back. You know, not that I was a big talker and I was always, you know, trying to tell somebody off or anything like that. But I just realized that in my personal life, it was pride that, that I had to deal with before I could prosper. Before I came, you know, into a true relationship with the most high, I thought everything that I did or the way that I was going, my heart was right and I intended for things to go the right way. But I found myself in some real messes, fellas, some real messes. I mean, y'all know how it is, man, when you when you got a significant other, when you got children, when you're trying to make it out here. We already know that this system is not nece necessarily set up for us, especially as men, black men even, to prosper. I mean, there's just so many things, man, that we have to deal with on a daily basis that's outside of just working, you know, that's outside of just family and everything like that. You feel me, Dads? I'm telling you, man. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if you just really do the research and you find out what we have to endure on a daily basis, you will absolutely give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High, and you will see all of the dangers that he keeps us from, seen and unseen. I mean, he sits where he sits, man, and he watches over us. But the thing that we have to understand is, you know, we have to really put down uh, this disease called pride. This disease called pride, man, is is really hurting. Is really hurting us as a as a body, as fellas in the church. It is it is destroying us right now. You can even go on the scopes, man, and you see a lot of pastors that are coming forth, and finally, a lot of us are admitting that there is a problem in the body of Christ. That there's some things that we really need to deal with if we are going to be prepared to enter into the kingdom. Amen. So with all that being said, I want to go back to this attribute of humility because humility is the key that gives us understanding on how to conduct ourselves as it pertains to pursuing righteousness. You can't pursue righteousness if you don't have a heart to humble yourself, if you don't have a heart to listen and to hear. Some of us spend so much time talking that we, we, we can't even get anything 
uh, any type of wisdom, knowledge, or understanding because we are just leaning on our own understanding. And the scriptures tell us that there is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is destruction. So we can't, we got to look at things in the spirit. Amen. We have to make sure that we look at things in the spirit. And this is why, uh, for, since, since we came on Periscope and even before that, this is the reason why we have and will continue to preach righteousness, which righteousness means simply to be in one accord with the, the, with the divine law of the Most High. Preaching love. We, need, we, need, we really need to learn how to operate in love. And, and, and it'll, it, it's love that will cause us to really embrace humility and put down pride. Christ, he walked in love no matter what he did. The disciples walked in love. Um, I know, uh, you know, people now, pastors that I can just name off the top of my head that have walked in so much love. They have walked in so much love regardless of what they've been through. There's something to that. And that's why we continue to just preach righteousness and love and understanding the commandments of the Most High. For we know that the greatest of the commandments is based on love. Amen. So what we need to understand, too, is that let's let's give you the definition of humility. Amen. I want to slow down a little bit. I'm getting excited. I have so much that I want to say tonight. But what we have to understand is that, again, in order for us to do anything that we are doing for Christ effectively, we have to operate in humility. It is humility that will allow the doors of our hearts to be opened and received from Christ. One of my favorite, favorite scriptures is Revelations 3 and 20. Amen. It says, behold, this is Christ speaking. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. Fellas, we need Christ more than anything today. In order for us to operate in humility, in order for us to be able to come from a place in which we can deal with the rigors of this world, deal with all of the things that are going on in the earth, we really, really have to hear from Christ in these last days. And everything that we need to know is right in his word. We cannot lean on our own interpretations of the word. We cannot lean on our own understanding, but we have to be diligent enough and humble enough to see what the most high is saying in his word. I'm telling you, my personal testimony, it has just been a journey, but it has been an awesome journey uh, because even just growing up, fellas, um, I didn't have a heart to receive, you know, really from the church for a long time. Um, You know, for me, my personal testimony is that you know, I went to church every Sunday. You know, I was with my mom every Sunday going to church. But there, even as a child and as a teenager, there was just so many things that I seen that turned me off from church. I seen a lot of hypocrisy. I seen a lot of, you know, almost like do as I say and not as I do. So, they, you know, you're hearing what you're supposed to do, but it's not necessarily reflected in people's lives. Lots of bite, backbiting, backstabbing. I, even a, a church that I was in, and I won't say the name of the church, but it separated families. I went from seeing, you know, my family, which was in a good place. After, you know, we got into this particular church, it seemed like the family just began to split up. So for a while, I was offended with the church. I can't necessarily say that I was offended with the most high, but I was offended with the church for a while. And it was one of them things where I was just like, I don't really want anything to do with the church. I don't, I mean, this is just, it's just not my thing, you know, because it didn't seem to do any good. It really didn't. And and I had to really go through some things. I, I, I basically just was out in the world, you know what I mean? In the water without a paddle. And I was just swimming and I was just trying to find my way. And, and there were things that seemed right and things that worked for a little while that I used to do. But I found out in the end that it was leading me to destruction. It led me to divorce. You understand? I'm a divorcee now, newly married. It led me to separation from my children for a while. It, it led me to uh, just being unemployed. It led me to, you know, having to start all over and learn how to make money honestly. You understand? I went out there and I did things that, you know, we do in the hood to make fast money. Not that, you know, that was necessarily how I grew up and that was my lifestyle um, because I had awesome parents. Amen. But when you when you are offended with your parents, that's probably what it was. I, I can admit that I was offended with my parents for a while because I felt like they were allowing me to, to, you know, be affected. You know, I felt like I was affected 
uh, by, by a lot of their decisions, um, directly and indirectly. So, you know, with that being said, man, I was like, man, I, I do it myself. I'll find my own way through this thing because some of the things that I seen them doing, it wasn't working. So all, I had all of this stuff, north, south, east, and west. I had all of these things, man, that I was seeing. I had all of these things that I was experiencing. But in the midst of it all, you know, I'm being told that Christ is the way and, and the truth and the life. But, you know, I would go in the word from time to time and get some scriptures because I always believed in looking at what people, you know, whatever they said, I never believed in necessarily taking everybody's word for it. So I, so there was a seed planted in me, you know, to receive some of what was being said, man. But, I, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, I was so rebellious. I mean, it's only by the grace of the most high that I sit before you today. I've been in situations where I've had a gun to my head and, and, and the dude could have pulled the trigger, but the most high saw fit not to allow that to happen because he had a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. All praises to the most high for my life. I've been in situations where I've been pulled over by police and they were ready to search my vehicle. And I got, you know, stuff in my car that will surely lead me to jail right away. No ifs, ands, or buts. And I'm in the car by myself, so there's nothing I can do about it. I got to take the responsibility for it. Amen. And, you know, the most high would cause, you know, a, a, a call to come in uh, that would cause the police to have to flee uh, immediately and go answer to a much more important uh, call or, you know, police officer, police officer pulled me over one time and I'm, I'm straight dirty, man. Got all this stuff on me and, and he's pulling me over because he says my taillight is out. But, you know, I was like, I just replaced my taillight. So he was like, you know, nah, your taillight is out. So he goes to the back of the car and when he looks at the taillight, the taillight is on. So he apologizes to me and say, I apologize. You know, you can go, you know, but, but still go and get that fixed. I mean, it was just so many close calls in my life, you know, where I could have ended up dead or locked up. Like I said, I'm a, div I'm a divorcee. I'm in a situation right now where I see my children only part time. You know, um, I got, I got joint and uh, custody legal and physically, but the kind of dad that I am, I was used to being around my children every day. So it broke my heart when I just was only able to be around my children limited time. So I'm telling you, man, there's so many things that I've gone through and, 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 and found myself offended with that has, a, 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 you know, caused me to operate in pride. And in doing that, it was an innocent kind of pride for real, because I didn't necessarily know I was walking in pride. I mean, all the way up until I officially gave my life to Christ and made a decision that you know, I had did my own thing for a little over 30 years. And now the, the fair thing that I can do is to give the most high the next 30 plus years. As I begin to get in this word and as I begin to see how much he loved me and, and all of the things that he was bringing up in the word that corrected me, that caused reproof and chastisement. You know, man, that, that it was beautiful. I, I, I felt the love. You know what I mean? I think, you know, uh, you know, universally, I think there are enough of us out there that uh, we find ourselves feeling like that if we are chastised or if we're corrected or reproof comes up, um, upon us, then something is wrong. But I know a lot of fellas, and I, I'm a personal testimony, especially when you go to jail and you talk to the fellas, man, they like, if I had somebody that stayed on me, if I had somebody that told me the truth, if I had somebody in, that loved me enough to tell me that what I was doing was wrong and keep telling me until I got it right, maybe I wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? And, and I just praise the most high that I can say that from the privacy and the comfort of my own home. You understand? And not from from jail or not from, you know, being <laughs> right, you know, in, in eternal torments. You understand the most high seen for for his goodness and his mercy to follow me. And it is all of these things that have that have humbled me that have humbled me and brought me from a mighty long ways, so much so now that all of the things that my wife and I are facing, we find ourselves able to face it in humility, understanding that we've been in worse situations and it could be worse. Paul says that I've learned how to abase and abound. So that's why I'm, uh, while I'm doing good, I'm going to give the most high glory, honor, and praise, and I'm going to stay in the place of humility. I'm not going to get high-minded. I'm not going to get full of pride. Amen. But even when things aren't going well, because of what I've gone through and because of my relationship with the most high, because I've made a decision to serve him with all my heart, soul and strength, because I want to please him by pursuing righteousness and because I stay uh, with the word before my eyes so that it keeps me humble. 
man, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I understand that all of this that I'm experiencing right now, it's only for a season anyway. It's only for a season anyway. And that leads me to one of the scriptures that I wanted to touch on tonight. Because we really need to get this. We really need to get this. I'm going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for everybody that is joining. I really love you. I appreciate you. And uh, I just hope you're being blessed right now. I just, want to, I just want you to get to know me a little bit better. I want you to get to know my testimony, amen? Uh, because when you know somebody and you're comfortable with them, I believe that you're able to receive uh, from them. When you're kind of offended or you don't know somebody, you know, you kind of just, you know, here and there, you take, you, you take them kind of sort of at their word, but you can't really necessarily receive uh, what is being said. And that, I think that is an attribute um, that, that as pastors we must have. We must uh, always make sure that we're transparent. Not that everybody needs to know every little detail about you. There still has to be um, an element of privacy uh, because there are people that aren't for you. And the most high tells us to be wise and you shouldn't even let your, your right, your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But you definitely have to be transparent enough uh, so that people get to know you. And, and I think over these next couple of scopes, I'm just going to give my personal testimony and how it correlates with humility and how the most high has brought me from a place of operating in pride. And, and have, has, has humbled me in love, in love, through his humility, through his grace, and through his mercy. I think a lot, even when we go out here and we talk to people in the streets, man, it's, it's hard for me um, to, to come at them with scripture. You understand what I'm saying? And just come at them with the word because they don't necessarily always understand it. So if I say, you know, the, mo you know, the most high, you know, his hand is covering you and I'm trying to come too spiritual and different things like that. They don't necessarily receive it or get it. But when I talk about mercy, when I talk about where they are and where they could be and how the most high has kept them through where they are, they can begin, excuse me, to relate to the most high. They begin to relate to where he is with them and where he is bringing them from. Amen. So listen. We got to understand that in humility, we have to really, really get this scripture right here. Amen. Second Corinthians uh, chapter four, verse 18. I want you to get this tonight. This is this is going to be a, 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 a key to your success in operating in humility. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which we which are seen, which are not seen are eternal. And so what we have to understand is it will be the things that we see that will bring us to a place where we begin to think that what we see is all that there is. And what we'll, what we'll do is we'll operate from only what we can see. And that leads us into pride. That leads us into doing things our own way. Again, the scripture says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, that there, but the end there is, uh, thereof is destruction. So we look at what's going on. And, you know, I know personally, you know, some fellas I know we see it's hard to find a job. You know, you may be qualified, but it's still hard to get a job. You may not be qualified and it's hard to get a job. You understand? So what happens? You know, you're in your situation and you're focusing on what you see in the natural, amen? But what happens is if you focus on what you see in the natural, as I've done in the past, you will find yourself in close calls. You will find yourself in situations where you will begin to go your own way. You will begin to do what you feel is necessary, amen? You will find yourself really, really going wayward and being almost falling into, and, and definitely, not almost, but falling into the traps of the enemy. The enemy is right now ruling in this earth for a time, and he knows that his time is limited. So through pride, he wants everybody to be where he is. He wants everybody to put themselves before they put the most high, or put themselves before they put their family. So what you do is you're operating in these things that are seen, amen? You're operating off of only what you see. And you allow that to dictate the direction that you take. But when you do that, when you go your own way and you don't go the way of the most high, automatically you are operating in pride. It's an innocent pride, but nevertheless, it's pride. 
That's why the Most High covered it when he said there's a way that seemeth right. Because there are ways that seem right. You understand? There are plenty of ways that seem right. That just seem like the right thing to do. But I found, you know, in my situation, when I was out there in the streets and I was hustling, it seemed right to me. It honestly did. Because I was looking at my situation. I was looking at what, looking at what I was facing. I was looking at the fact that I couldn't get a job, so on and so forth. And I was like, man, I got to feed my family. You know, this is what I, I you know, I got to do this. And I got to be smart about it. But, you know, it, it seemed like it seemed right to me at the time. As crazy as that may sound, I look back on it. I'm like, man, that's crazy. That was foolish. Because if I get caught, you know, I'm, I'm in jail and now I'm away from my children for a long time with no options. You understand what I'm saying? So well, I, I was just focusing on what I was saying. And, and that's what I'm saying to you tonight. Don't focus on what you're saying. The word tells us don't look at the things that, that are seen. But we have to focus on the things that are unseen because the things that are unseen are eternal, which means that the things that we can't see or if we give ourselves to look at it in the spirit, now we can see our way. Now we can see the clear pathway to progress. But in the midst of it, we will have to humble ourselves. We will have to put some things down. There's so many things that we've been taught in our lives that we thought was right, that seemed right. But amen, it's not. It's not. There were so many things that I thought was right that now when I go back and I review the word of the most high, it's absolutely wrong. Amen. It's absolutely wrong. And the reason why I'm staying a little bit general with it is because, fellas, we know we know how it is. You know how it is. You know the situation that you are in right now. You know the situation that you've been in. But I believe all of you fellas have a heart to go higher uh, in, in, in this life. You want to go higher. You want to be able to, to make it above and beyond what you've been going through. And, and, and what I'm here to tell you is that based off of testimony, based off my life, there is no other way. It's true. It's true when Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you get in Christ and you allow him, as Revelations 3 and 20 says, to come in and sup with you, he will begin to turn things around. He will begin to change. But the only way that he can turn things around and change those things is if you are humble enough to understand that what you have been doing or the way that you have been going is not the way. That Christ is the way. Amen. And he says to us that if you believeth on me, as the scripture says, then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So as we sup with Christ, as we believe on him, as the scripture says, as we get in this word and understand how important it is to remain in the counsel of the godly, of those who are pursuing righteousness, of those who have a heart to keep the, mammoth, the commandments of the most high, we will now be able to see clearly those things that we could not see clearly before. Amen. And in order to operate that way, we have to operate right here, as it says, that we have to look at those things which are not seen because they are eternal. Our decisions, fellas, that we make on a daily basis, it affects our eternity. It affects the eternal outcome. Amen. For the scriptures tell us that man is to die once, then the judgment. So this is the only opportunity, the only opportunity. This is the only chance we have to prove ourselves. Amen. And the scripture commands us to prove ourselves. He says that you in Romans 12 and 2, that you cannot conform to what you see. You cannot conform to the things of this world. Amen. But you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you are renewing your mind, you are operating in a place of humility because we haven't been on this earth that long. I don't care if you've been on earth for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Life is like a vapor. And what we have and what the most high does is he shows us in his word everything that we need to know. And there are examples in this word. Our forefathers like Enoch, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, the list goes on and on. The prophets and ultimately Christ himself. It even says in the scriptures that Christ had to go through the same things that, he, we, that we had to go through. He had to make sure he didn't get caught up in pride. He had to make sure that he kept himself humble. Think about that. He was the son of the most high God, the first begotten of all spirits, seated in heavenly places. Amen. And like Pastor Rhonda said in the girl chat, he had to humble himself. Amen. He had to leave that place of joy and he had to humble himself to come down to a wicked and evil world in order to save those who would stop going their own way and be humble enough to believe that he truly is the way, the truth and the life. 
And this is why we need to get a greater revelation of who Christ was, especially my fellas, man. We need to get a greater revelation on who Christ is. You won't believe uh, how many people that I deal with in the barbershop and how many people that I deal with in my daily life on the streets that don't really believe Christ even existed. Or they say if he did exist, you know, then I don't necessarily believe what I've been told about him. That's because being in this world and not having an opportunity to renew our mind or ignoring the opportunity to humble ourselves enough to renew our mind, we think things about Christ that simply aren't true. But Christ was our brother. He came in, this, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and he had to endure racism. He had to endure people attacking his character. He had to endure people spitting and beating on him. There were so many things he had to endure. He had to put his flesh in submission, just like we do, even as it, even as it is become, becomes, uh, it becoming to women. Everything that we deal with, fellas, everything that we deal with, Christ had to deal with. That was our elder brother. And he came from the heavenlies into the earth to model for us what we had to do or what we were to do. But it says that he humbled himself. He was willing to humble himself and become a servant so that he can accomplish the will of the most high. And so what I had to understand is in order for me to be successful in this life, in order, in order for me to make it into eternity or, or even have an understanding what eternity was truly about, I had to stop focusing on those things that were seen. I had to stop focusing on those things that are temporary. If I was totally uh, just... 100% uh, transparent about what I'm going through right now. I'm telling you, if, if I didn't know uh, about the attribute of humility, if I didn't understand Christ the way I understand him, man, I would be resorting back to those things that I did uh, in, in my past. I would say, hey, you know what, man, this, this Christian walk don't work. And that's a word out there for somebody right now because it's a lot of us that are falling away in these last days because they don't think the word works. They don't understand Christ. They don't have a full revelation on who Christ was. You understand what I'm saying? They, they need to get a revelation on who he is. He walked this thing out in the flesh. Amen. He walked this thing out in the flesh. And then he said at the end that if you let me in, I'll tell you what to do. I'll share this wisdom with you. I'll, I, I've been through it all already. And so now what I want to do is I want, I want to come in and I want to sup with you and I want you to sup with me. Because how many know that our forefathers, they go through things and then they share the wisdom on what they've gone through so that we don't necessarily make those same mistakes. That's what leaving a legacy is. When, you're, when, you're, when the wisdom of your fathers can come forth and your elder brothers can come forth and you can relate to where they were, right? You can relate to where they were and then they share these things with you and you can see the mistakes that they made, where it got them. So wisdom and humility would tell us, you know what, if he didn't get away with it, I'm not going to get away with it. If he wasn't able to, 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 to keep that going, you know, like I heard a pastor say, man, I don't see no 75 year old drug dealers out here. You know, ain't no 75 year old drug dealers out here, man. You know, because at some point in time, they realized that that was not the way. Amen. So Christ is saying that if you humble yourself and you let me into your heart. Everything that I've been through when I walk the earth, because it's everything that you're going through, I can show you the way. I can tell you the truth about really how to operate in the earth during these times. And what that is going to do, it's going to bring life and life more abundantly. Christ said that I came that you may have life and that more abundantly. Amen. So he wants us to experience the abundant life right here on earth. But the only way that we can experience the abundant life is if we are willing to humble ourselves. If we're willing to see that the way we have been doing things is not, no longer the way. It is no longer the remedy. And if it is a remedy, it's only temporary because you're doing it in your own might, which means that you're operating off of that which is seen. Amen. But if you are operating in the spirit and you're able to get this thing and see it the way Christ sees it and you allow him, you allow him to, to, to give you his perspective and his vision on how to deal with things. Not, not that you won't have any problems, but you'll know how to navigate through it. You'll know how to get the victory over it. You'll know how to be triumphant and overcome. You know, right now, there are things that I'm having to overcome. 
You understand what I'm saying? And fellas out there, you going through the same things I'm going through. You going through issues with child support and the courts. You understand? You going through relationships that have been broken and you either trying to mend them or even if you and, and in the midst of you trying to mend those relationships, the other half just only sees you for who you was. They don't see you for who you are or for who you are becoming because they can't see. They're focused on that, which is seen. Amen. In their own eyes. Trust me, you got to get what I'm saying. This is the pathway to progress. It's humility that is going to be the remedy to us opening up our hearts to receive from Christ. Amen. As we not only tonight, but next week, I'm really going to get even deeper in my testimony and where the Most High has brought me from, even from a, a, the perspective of, of just in this relationship walk with him and how he has showed me uh, over these last two years um, that what you have been believing and some of the things that you have been believing in, even in your walk with me, it was never me in the first place. It was a misrepresentation of who I am. The Most High has really opened himself up to me and he can open himself up to you. The simple thing that we got to do is make sure that we humble ourselves. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 tell us that if my people who are called by my name are willing to humble themselves, pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive you and I will heal your land. We serve a forgiving God. We serve a loving God. He knows that you don't want to go through the things that you're going through. He knows that you don't want to remain in a sinful state, that you don't want to remain in a wicked state. But what we do is we make the mistake of not humbling ourselves. And so what didn't work the first time, we'll keep trying it over again and over again and over again. And we may tweak it here and tweak it there, but it's still not working because it's not founded. It's not on the foundation of Christ. It's not him coming into your heart, supping with you and showing you the truth. He says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Amen. That brings me to Matthew chapter seven, verse 14. We want to make sure that when we operate in, hu in humility, that everything that we're doing that we want that we want it to prosper. We want everything to that we that we're trying to do to prosper. And the only way that we can do that is through focusing on Christ so that he can show us that which we cannot see. Because what we cannot see is that which is eternal. And Christ is the way. He is the one that comes in and sups with us and gives us everything that we need. Five, Matthew 7 and 14 says, "Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine." Remember, he's coming into your heart. He's supping with you or he wants to come into your heart and sup with you. But but here it is right here. It says, therefore, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. So first of all, you got to have a heart and a desire to hear Christ. And that's why he says whosoever, because in Revelations three and 20, he says that he stands at the doors knock and knock. He is a perfect gentleman. He is not trying to bang your door down and tell you what to do. You understand what I'm saying? He is not going to force himself on you. For it tells us in Deuteronomy that the Most High said, I place before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life. So even back there in Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, basically what he was saying was, behold, I place Christ before you. You understand? I place Christ before you. And also we know that the opposite or the adversary of Christ is the enemy. I place Christ before you and I place the enemy before you. You understand? You got to choose Christ. But if you don't choose Christ, then by default, you've chosen to follow the enemy. You've chosen to follow the enemy. So do you see how that correlates from Old Testament to New Testament, from New Testament to Old Testament? We put these precepts together and we understand that Christ was spoken of in the volume of the book from beginning into end. So this is why he says here. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, for we know that doing, thank you, Deuteronomy 28, for we know that, that, that to be righteous is to do righteousness. So Christ is giving us the keys to righteousness. He's given us instruction on how to pursue and operate in righteousness. Amen. And then if you do it, he says, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Verse 25, and the rain descended and the floods came 
And, and, and in, in the scriptures, if you go into Revelations 22, it will tell you what the flood is. The flood comes from that which is called the dragon or religion, the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. The flood comes. And the enemy will use whether it's the Roman Catholic Church or what you're going through and seeing it in your own eyes. That's called the flood. A flood represents lies. Amen. So it says here and the rain descended. That means whatever you are going through, the storms of life, whatever you go through, when when the, when these storms are, are and this rain is descending upon you and the floods come, the lies. Because when you're going through a storm, the enemy will lie to you. He will come in and he will lie to you. And he will tell you that you don't need Christ, that you don't need the Bible, that Christ is not the way, the truth of life. Go ahead. What you're doing right now is perfectly fine. He tried Christ in the wilderness. He tried Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. So what makes you think he won't try you? What makes you think he won't lie to you? So when the rain is descending, when the storms of life come upon you and the lies or the floods come, and the winds blow. How do you get blown by the wind? Psalms 1 tells us that we are to delight in the law of the Most High so that we will be planted like a tree by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in its season and whatsoever you doeth, it will prosper. You understand? So when you operate under the law, statutes and commandments of the Most High in humility, understanding that that's how you please the Most High once you are the righteousness of God, then what happens is you will be planted. This is the rock. If you're planted in the word, then you're abiding in Christ and Christ is abiding in you. Therefore, your, your foundation is solid because he is the chief cornerstone. He is the way, the truth and the life. And no man will enter into eternity with the father unless you go through him. That is the end of it. That is the beginning and the end. Christ was there in the beginning and he'll be there at the end. The first and the last alpha and omega. Amen. It says here. The winds blew and beat upon that house. You are the temple. The church now is not a building, but it is a temple. Your body is the temple. You understand? So when the enemy comes and he lies to you and you're going through the storms and the wind is blowing and it's beating against your temple, it's beating against your thinker, your feeler, your chooser and causing you to panic and operate in pride and then you lose focus or you put the attribute of humility on the back burner. This is what happens. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. And when rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. Fellas, I have fallen enough in my life. You understand me? I have fallen enough in my life. I finally, you know, got to a point where I understood this scripture. I understood the attribute of humility and how important it was. And I'm still understanding it day by day. I'm still understanding it. But the only way that you're going to break this vicious cycle that you're going through in your life is to be able to humble yourself and understand that you must build everything on the foundation of who is Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. Anything else, when the winds come, when the storms of life come, when the enemy comes in like a flood and, and, and brings these lies, amen, when he brings these lies, if you're not stationed, if you're not abiding in Christ, if you are not founded upon that rock, everything that you do is going to fail. And I need you to get that because right now there are many of you who are trying to do it your own way, whether you're just stubborn or whether you're just trying to find a different way. You know, plan A didn't work, so now I got to go to plan B. And then plan B don't work, so I got to go to plan C. But in these plans, you never operate in humility enough to seek the most high. We are, the Proverbs tells us that we are to give our plans to the most high. Let him structure our plans. Let him take away those things that aren't going to work and add those things in that are going to work. And then he gives them back to us. And now we're able to function. Before Christ did anything, he always went off to himself and he always sought the most high in prayer. He always gave himself an opportunity to hear from the most high. He said, I'm not doing anything that I don't see my father doing or saying anything that I don't see my heavenly father saying. Why? 
because he built his house on the foundation in which the Most High intended for him to build. You understand? So he operated as a wise man. He operated as a wise man. So again, when we understand that if we don't build our foundation on the word of, of the Most High God, then anything that we do, it's going to fall. And that's why a lot of what we're getting ready to go into, we're going to see why the church itself, why the body of Christ is struggling so greatly. Why it's struggling so badly right now. Because unfortunately, the religion or the, or the Christianity that we're operating in today, it has not been built or founded truly on Christ. It has been founded on a flood or a lie that the enemy has brought in to make you think it's founded on Christ. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this thing down in the future and we're going to begin to show you what the truth is and what the lies are. Amen. And this is why I want to give you my own testimony. I want to let you know as we destroy the works of the enemy and as we go into these things and we discover what doctrines are of Christ and what doctrines are of not. I want you to understand that we are going to be coming from a place of humility. We're going to be coming from a place where, you know what, we've been there and we've done that. But as we continue to allow Christ to come in and sup with us, as we continue to seek first the kingdom of the most high and his righteousness, then the truth was added unto us. The most high already told us in John 4 that he is a spirit. And he is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So as, as the Most High has begun to reveal truth to us, as we continue to seek him, now we are able to operate in a place of where we, we don't have to worry about nothing. We don't have to worry about nothing. We don't even get tackled by pride the way we used to. You understand? Because we see it. We see it from afar because Christ is on the inside and he's operating on the inside of us. So before pride could even get any anywhere near close to us, he's all his Holy Spirit is already tapping us on the shoulder. They go pride. That's not of the most high. That's not of Christ. If you go that way, you're not building on a solid foundation. You're not building on the rock. So fall back. Be humble enough to have some patience. Be humble enough, even in the storm and in the midst of what you're going through to stand flat footed. Go get in my word, follow my laws, follow my statutes, follow my commandments so that you'll be planted. Delight in my law so that you'll be planted. Amen. And that's and, and so that's the place that we're coming from, you know, and as we begin to destroy the works of the devil, as we begin to show you guys the, the foundation that the church is 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 standing on right now. It's a foundation that the, that the most high would consider to be a house built upon sand. Psalms 83 tells us, uh, uh, fellas and pastors, it, 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 Psalms 83 tells us that the enemy used people. He would use a people to take over the houses of God, that they would conspire against the children of Israel, who were the people who were to bring forth the law, statutes and commandments in the earth. They were to bring forth his perfect will in the earth. But the enemy found his way in through pride found his way in through causing men and these priests to operate in the letter of the law. And then what they began to do was go wayward and they began to do abominations. And then he got in, took the houses of God into possession. And for generations now, we have been functioning on that which the enemy has built. We've been focusing and trying to do things on, on his time and in his construct. Amen. And we have forgotten our God It's scriptures that tell us that we need to come back to our first love. And the only way we can do that, fellas, the only way we can do that is to allow Christ to come in, who is the way, the truth and the life. And I just speak over you a spirit of humility right now, because that's the key. It's going to take the spirit of humility and the understanding of humility in order for you to get over everything it is that you're struggling with today so that you don't continue in this cycle. This rat race, this just trying things over and over and again, and you don't see it working, but you're never acknowledging Christ. You're never humbling yourself enough to do it 100 percent the way of Christ. Amen. Revelations three and 20 again says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. But it takes humility, humility by definition is a modest or low view 
of one's own importance, humbleness. So what you have to understand is in order to receive from Christ, you have to understand that what he says and the wisdom that he has for you is far more important than your own. It's far more important than your own. And it's only going to take you, it's always going to take humility to receive that which Christ brings forth because he's trying to break away those stony places. He's trying to prune you. He's breaking away those branches in your life that are not producing fruit. And now he is replacing those unfruitful branches with, with a solid branch, with a solid foundation. But you have to abide in him because he is the true vine. So in order for you to produce the fruit that is everlasting, to pr produce fruit that is eternal, you have to understand who the vine is. You have to have a full understanding of who he is. But the only way you're going to get it is to operate in humility because the only way that he could bring forth the sal salvation for us to be able to receive him now is he had to humble himself and become a servant. He had to stay in prayer. He had to receive from the most high. Christ got angry, too. All of the things that he was that he was seeing that he's seen going on during the time of the Ro of, of the Romans is the same things that we're dealing with and that we're going through today. Nothing has changed. There's nothing new under the sun. And the, and the sad part about it is we haven't researched our history enough to know that that which is going on now, even when you look at politics and you look at the election and you look at what's going on in the government and you look at where this world is going, it just didn't start today. It just didn't start 10 years ago. It just didn't start 20 years ago. It started all the way even back before Christ. When Christ came and was born into this sinful generation, amen, he had to endure and learn about the same things that we're having to endure and learn about today. And he overcame it. So the only way that we can overcome is by the blood of the lamb who is Christ and the word of our testimony. Amen. And I just want to encourage you, fellas, stay humble. If you aren't humble, I speak to you. I speak over you now a spirit of humility because it's the only way, especially as men that we are going to be able to operate in our rightful place. It's going to be the only way that we can prove that good, perfect, and acceptable will of the Most High. Amen? And again, next week, I'm going to go deeper into some testimonies. I'm going to get a little more deep into testimonies and a little more specific because as I do, um, I'm sure you fellas, I'm sure y'all are going to be able to relate. man. Just because I'm a pastor, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm beyond or above the same things that you're going through, the same things that you're tempted with. If anything, I'm, I'm, I'm even more tempted by the things of this world. I'm even more attacked because I've made a decision to allow Christ to come in and to only operate according to his way and his truth. And if I operate that way, it's automatically going to birth life in that more abundantly. Amen. So again, we want to just let you know that we want you to know who we are. We want you to know who we are as people. Because we've been there and we're still going through things. And we want you to understand that we are in this fight with you, male and female, man and woman. We are in this thing together and we need each other more now than we ever have. Because what's getting ready to happen over the next six months, what's getting ready to happen well into 2017 and 2018, just based on what has happened in this last couple administrations, we are going to need each other more and more. We're going to we're really going to need each other. I'm talking about resources. We're going to need to put down pride and be able to humble ourselves to come together and to be able to operate together financially. This is why we are doing our storehouse with the Restoration Center Charlotte, while we're trying to get people off of the government system and on the system of the kingdom so that we can understand that we have to come together in humility. We have to be willing to love one another. We have to be willing to do the second of the greatest commandments, and that's to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And that is the only way that we are going to triumph in these last days, fellas. But, but, but you're the leaders. You understand what I'm saying? The way God ordained it, he, the, the, Christ, he, uh, the Most High is the head of Christ, and then the head of the man is Christ. So there's an order to this thing. And as long as we are operating out of order, then the end of it, it's all type of cracks. It's all type of holes. It's like a big old dam and there's so many holes and cracks and you got all of these leaks everywhere. And until you plug those holes, until you plug those cracks and you fix those cracks, you're not going to you're not going to retain what you have. You're not going to retain that living water. Amen. Be strong and of good courage. That's what the most High told uh, Joshua. 
And that still stands today. We're going to have to stand strong in these last days. We're going to have to have courage. We're going to have to operate in this attribute of humility more than ever. Because this world construct, the enemy is using the construct of this world. He is using the government and religion to oppress the true children of God. And if we don't understand who we are, if we can't separate the wheat from the tare, if we can't separate the truth from the flood, which is lies, then we are going to be swallowed up. Our houses are going to fall. Amen. And the Most High says, no, 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 no. I love my people too much. I, I sent my son that whoever will have an ear to hear and receive him, that they will have eternal life and that they will be able to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And so that's why over the next couple of weeks, I just want to share my personal testimony. And I encourage you, fellas, share your personal testimony with me. I'll even read it on Periscope if you're willing to share it. OK, all you got to do is send emails of your testimonies and, and of what you're believing the most high for in these last days. Send it to Restoration Center Charlotte at Gmail dot com. I will be more than happy to share your testimony. That's what we need to overcome in these last days. We need testimonies. We need to be able to build each other up in our most holy faith. And it's going to take us being examples in the earth today as Christ was an example for us then and is still an example for us now. Amen. That is Barbershop Talk for tonight. It has truly, truly been a blessing to share with you guys, and it's going to be a blessing to continue to do that. Um, I hope that you have been blessed. I hope that you have been edified. Um, before I go tonight, I encourage you to share your prayer request. Anything that you, that you are believing the most high to do in your life, anything that you are struggling with, anything that you can't seem uh, uh, to let go of and, and, and go the way of the most high, um, if you want to get, get that spirit of pride off of you, send, 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 send me an email. Just let me know what, what you're going through, what, you, what your struggles are. What can I join with you and believe the most high with you on? Send me an email to restorationcentercharlotte at gmail.com. If you want to send your phone number, send your phone number. I'll give you a call and we'll pray. We'll get on the phone and we'll believe the most high daily for breakthrough in your life. We're going to have to do this. Coming up very, very soon, we're going to have to get the revelation on this, so we might as well start doing it now. We need each other more than we, than, than we ever have needed each other. And, that, and, and it's more evident when I look at, at Facebook. You know, we look at Facebook, even just amongst believers, there's so much tit for tat. There's so much tearing each other down. There's so, there not enough building each other up. There's not enough truth. Everybody is elevating themselves, you know, wanting to show themselves to be more righteous than the next man or Wanting to say, you know what, you know, the word is this way or the word is that way and, and, and everybody has their own interpretation. No, there's only one interpretation. There's only one God. There's only one true God. There's only one Christ. So there's only one word. There's only one doctrine. Amen. And so we have to get that. We really have to get that. Send all prayer requests. Send all concerns. Send all testimonies to restorationcentercharlotte at gmail.com. It's how we're going to be able to band together and encourage one another in these last days so that we can see the kingdom come as the Most High wills it to come. Amen. We don't want to miss out on what the kingdom has for us. Amen. Uh, I want to just make a few short announcements. Uh, first, backpacks for the homeless. We're going to make that that uh, declaration and put that out there to you every single time that we come on social media because they need it. Um, it's very necessary. It's something that we're always going to do. It takes about 10 to $15 to make each backpack. One backpack takes about 10 to 15 bucks. So I encourage you, you know, set aside some money when you get paid. Understand? Set aside some money when you get paid and be a blessing to Charlotte because this is one of the areas where the government is oppressing the people. Those who are homeless, those who are less fortunate, the laws and things that they're putting in place is causing these people to just fall into a lower and lower and lower state. And they don't know how to get out of it. Amen. They don't know how to get out of it on their own. And that's why we have to share the gospel of the kingdom with them. And we just always like to have something to put in their hand. It's just such a great blessing to get to put put things in people's hands and just let them know that you're thinking about them let you know that that you let them know that you love them amen um so you can send uh uh your your donations if it's monetary you can send it to paypal at restoration center charlotte at gmail.com amen 
Also, if you want to send items, you can send your, uh, your list or what you want to bring uh, or what you want to send. You can uh, share that with us on the same email, restorationcentercharlotte at gmail.com. And with that, what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to give you the liberty to send things and not money. But we have two different locations and where we receive them depending upon the weight. So it's going to allow us to just give you the information that you need to be a blessing to the citizens in Charlotte. Amen. This, if, if you're in the Charlotte area, uh, Pastor Rhonda is just helping me with the announcements. If you are in the Charlotte area, this, Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday, March 8th, we encourage you to meet us at the Arbor Glen Outreach Center on 1520 Clanton Road. Uh, we're going to have our community gathering where we're going to come in and we're going to just really let the people know who we are and what we're doing in the community and what we're looking to do. It's going to start at 7 p.m. sharp. We're going to have some food and some beverage for those that are just getting off work and didn't get a chance to go home. We encourage everybody that's local. You know who you are. My fellas, I need you more than ever. I need you more than ever to come out and support me. Ladies, those of you who are local, Pastor Rhonda needs you more than ever to come out and support her. This is the gathering. This is the love. This is humbling yourselves and putting somebody and putting somebody else's importance above your own. We need you to be with us on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, March 8th, at the Arbor Glen Outreach Center. The people that are going to be coming in, man, they're going to be hungry. And not just for food, physical food, but they're going to be hungry because they want to get out of their situation. The area that we in, these people want to make it out of their situation. They want to get out of this rat race. They need remedies. They need understanding. They need wisdom. And they're willing to follow it. They're absolutely willing to follow it. They have humbled themselves. This is the prophecy. That that people will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, so the Most High can hear from heaven, forgive them, wipe the slate clean, and heal them. And that's what we are going to do in our community outreaches. This is the empowerment that we're bringing to them. We're bringing tangible ways in order to bring forth the remedy to their situation. Amen. So we need you to be with us in spirit and in body. Amen. Uh, again, this Saturday, we encourage you to tune into Periscope, uh, where we are going to scope our worship in the word on the streets. Again, as we did, uh, uh, what is it, two, two Sabbaths ago? Uh, the Lord really moved and he really blessed, you know, people wanted prayer. People were just being so edified and so blessed. So we're going to do that again in, in uh, efforts to also prepare uh, for, excuse me, March 8th, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at the Outreach Center called Arbor Glen. Uh, on Sunday, we'll be in uh, Uptown Charlotte in the Dealworth area with the relatives, the children that are between the ages of 7 and 17. We're going to go out there and we're going to cook dinner for them. We're going to kick it with them. We're going to play some video games, maybe go outside, play some football. We're going to do a little bit of everything. And we just want to let them know that we're here. And so even if you want to uh, sow financially or monetarily into that, we encourage you to do so. Um, we, we definitely need donations. We definitely need individuals to, to have a heart to sow into our ministry because our ministry is not going to be government founded. And I want to make that clear. We're getting people off of welfare. We're getting people out of the government system. 2017, Tom Brokaw said on NBC News that they're going to bring forth the uh, Verifone chip where they slide it up under your skin. That's the mark of the beast. So everybody that is attached to the government, in order for them to get anything, they're going to have to take the mark. And we don't want that. We don't want that. And the Most High is moving quick. He's moving fast. We have, we're, we're out, we're, 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 we have no time to play around. Amen? And so we need these individual donations. We need those of you who are willing to give, whether it be small or whether it be great. We need you guys to sow into this ministry in order to bring forth the will of the Most High. This all things in common ministry that we are establishing through the Restoration Center Charlotte. So what that money is going to do, it's going to allow us to go buy food, take it to those children, cook it for them. We're going to be doing the cooking. We're going to have them get in the kitchen and we're going to cook with them. We're going to show them domestic things that they can do to take care of themselves and especially our fellas. Uh, to be able to take care of their wives. And, and Rhonda, Pastor Rhonda is going to be working on things to show the young women how to be a virtuous woman and how to take care of their husbands. Amen. This is, this is, this is what the Most High has commanded us to do. So we are just excited about the doors that the Most High has uh, opened for us 
in the city of Charlotte. We are truly, truly excited. And we want you guys to be excited for us. And we want you guys to be excited with us. Enough to keep us in prayer. Enough to send monetary donations as well as items for our backpacks. We, we, we just want to do the will of the Most High. And it will get done. Amen. Uh, so Pastor Ronda wants me to just share with you really quickly. Love you too. Love you too. Billy from Danville. What's happening, Captain? What's happening, dude? Man, it's a pleasure to see you on here, man. May the Most High bless you. Thank you, man. Give me a call. I'll text you to make sure you have my number, and I want you to give me a call, Billy. I miss you, man. I miss the family and everybody. Uh, but again, uh, we're just excited about what the Most High is doing. Uh, Pastor Ronda just wanted me to give you some ideas of, of what we're going to put in those backpacks. It's going to be lotion. It's going to be soap, washcloths, socks, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, shampoo. Uh, what else, baby? Brushes, uh, combs. You understand? T-shirts, socks, you name it. Anything that you need, any things that you need, anything that you know you need to put on in order to be comfortable when you come out the house. You don't want your breath all stinking and everything. You need you, you, you brush your teeth every morning. We want we want people to be able to do the same thing. Amen. So uh, uh, definitely just just stay stay up with us. It's, it's great things going on in the Restoration Center, Charlotte, and all those who are local as well as abroad. We want you to be a part of it. Anybody who has a heart for the Most High, those who are charitable and those who love other people and want to see other people succeed and prosper, we need your help. We solicit your help. And the Most High, trust me, will be your reward. He will bless you mightily in these last days. The Most High Christ said that th that which you do to the least of them, you've also done unto me. So that's why we are taking such a focus on doing those who are called the least, those who are called the minorities. We want to be a blessing to them. We want to be a blessing to our people. Amen. Um, so with that being said, uh, I just want to pray out. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this barbershop talk. Father God, I just declare and decree that everybody who has listened to this scope has an ear to hear. And I declare that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in their lives, spiritually, mentally, and physically. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. And as we sign out, as Pastor Rhonda and us always do, come on, baby, we got to do it together. We want you to make sure, hey, we want you to make sure that you make the, the most high, high, the most high. high in, in your, your life. life. God, God bless, bless you. Good night. Good night.